Hello all, welcome back to Uncommon Geeks. My myself Vasant. I hope you all doing well. As you know, today's topic is again a continuation of promise. We have already discussed what is the basics of promise and different ways of creating the promise in a very simple way in JavaScript. So in this video, we are going to slightly extend the example by asking you some very common questions in the interview. So this video, uh, unlike my other uh, videos in the series, this is not like purely dedicated for a question and answer. It's a combination of question and answer and the explanation. Okay. So without wasting further time, let's get started. Uh, here I've written question number one. So it's it's the same example as that of the last one. I haven't made much change. Only change that I have made is I have put a three log statements in line number two, line number nine, and line number fifteen. Okay. So line number two, the uh, uh, thing is uh, the statement is before promise starts. Line number nine after promise starts. Line number fifteen after promise ends. Okay. Very very straightforward. In line number five, as you, as you know, there is already set timeout and a resolve, and that promise has been used here. My question is very clear. You all, you might have already know what is the order in which the logs are executed. Okay, so this to answer this question, you should know uh, some basic knowledge on the event loop in the JavaScript. Okay, I actually thought of making a separate video on event loop, but um, there are already tons of information available for the event loop. And my purpose of making the video series is not to explain concepts of JavaScript, but just to enable you uh, for facing uh, interviews. Okay, so what I'll do. Uh, I'll just try to touch base a little bit about the event loop. Otherwise, there is a beautiful documentation in the developer.mozilla.org where they explain the uh, event loop very much in detail. I'll also touch base a little bit on this, but I'll also link this uh, URL in the description. Please go through and read it. It is a very straightforward topic and you'll be able to understand. Okay. Now, question is simple. Which order the console log, log will be executed? Like, will this this statement this statement is printed first, then this, etc. That is the question. If you know the answer, please mention question number one and put your answer in the comment section. If not, let me execute it. Uh, let it finish. Then let's go to the explanation. So first statement that got executed is before promise starts, which is right. Second is after promise starts. Third is after promise ends. And the fourth one is actually what was resolved in the set timeout. Okay. If you see here, a console.log before promise, obviously this is right, irrespective of whether promise exists in this block or not, because this is the first statement in the in the, in the given um, uh, file. So it will be executed. It will be executed because it doesn't have any dependencies. JavaScript totally knows how to do this, how to execute this. It's not a function call where JavaScript go and look for a function. It's just a log statement and JavaScript logged it. Then it encountered promise, encountered promise, but it did not execute anything related to promise. It came here, then it printed this also after promise starts. Then it saw promise dot then and it also knew there is a promise that exists in above above uh, statement. Okay, still it did not execute this. Then it came here and after promise ends it got printed uh, after promise ends. After these t statements are printed, then it went back and processed this. Correct. If I if I had to uh, uh, just draw some pictorial image here, say here, here, say here, then it went back here. Okay, so it is it is highly unlikely for a programming language to go traverse like this, where you go up, come down, then go back. So obviously that is not possible uh, for a programming language to do that. But either you should have some threads or something to go back. Correct. So JavaScript here uses the concept of event loop to achieve this. If you see here, uh, this is the stack, and this is the heap, and this is the queue. I, I'm I'm keeping it very simple uh, explanation here. Okay, what happens is everything that is has to be executed in uh, in sequentially without having any further uh, dependencies or asynchronity will be part of this stack and will be executed one after the other. Okay, whenever JavaScript encounters a uh, asynchronous task like set timeout, set interval, or um, promises, it will move that from main stack to this heap memory. Okay, or this also some places it is explained as web APIs. So here they take their own time, they execute it. Once they are done, they'll come back to this queue. Okay, so once JavaScript executes everything which are inside the stack, it will start picking the items from the queue. Okay, so actually there is no order guaranteed here in in this queue. Depending on however the tasks are completed, asynchronous tasks are completed, and when the main thread becomes free, it starts picking the ta task from the this queue. Okay, so what happened in this example is, so it, it saw a promise, or it got to know. Okay, it's a promise, so I cannot execute it straight away because this this involves some amount of work. I, it will not some amount of delay. So let us skip this from here. Then it came here uh, after promise. Okay, I don't have to wait for anything. Execute it. It's a promise dot. Then okay, this it knows there is a. Uh, promise which is uh, executing in the top and here they are trying to do the dot then method so after the promise has resolved they want to perform certain activity okay well uh, what uh, javascript does is okay this is an asynchronous task so let us wait for this until this asynchronous task is completed i cannot execute this dot then so it will wait for 
then it'll go to, it'll skip this line or move it to the heap memory or web api and go to the next line and print it after all these statements have been executed then at, at certain point in time this also finishes execution that is after two seconds then they come back to the queue and javascript method is free now because it has executed all the sequential operations then it'll pick this and it'll show on the screen okay this is the order of execution now this uh, people with the concept of a, a event loop will be able to answer this because this is very explicit there is a two second delay so whenever javascript encounter this javascript execution or unlike javascript every programming language is very fast it doesn't take uh, uh, two seconds to print these things they will be in some microsecond they'll be able to print all the three so obviously this promise will be resolved after this these statements are printed okay because uh, in a common sense also you can tell two seconds it has to wait if it has to execute this promise so it will execute all the other three and come back here what if i uh, change from two seconds to zero seconds now what will be the output so why i'm asking this question is uh, only if you know the understand the concept very much in depth then only you'll be able to answer for the variations of questions correct everybody will be able to answer the classical problems like this so they would know they would have read somewhere and they'll try to answer now set time out is set to zero second correct so whenever set time out to zero second what is the expectation is executed immediately correct there is no time you, you don't have to wait anything so then javascript comes here it looks at a promise which will be resolved in a zero second so immediately then it can then it'll come here after promise promise dot then it is already resolved by the time it comes here because it is not waiting for anything correct but let me execute if you know the answer please do mention that in comment section otherwise i'll execute it you see after promise after promise starts and after promise ends and welcome to uncommon gigs if you observe keenly the order in which the logs were printed did not get changed the order remained same okay why because javascript doesn't bother much about what is the delay here javascript just see whether it is an asynchronous task or synchronous synchronous task if it is synchronous then execute it if it is asynchronous then move it to the web api section or heap memory okay where they has to wait until the processing is done in this case it might be immediate but still javascript has no special logic to differentiate between something with a delay of 10 seconds something with a delay of 5 second or no no delay they it has a generic logic where all the asynchronous tasks are taken away from the stack and they put in heap memory or web apis so then only after javascript executes everything that is in a sequential or can be executed immediately only after that javascript picks this task so due to which you might have seen here there is no delay here immediately this was got printed because there is no delay but still it has to wait for all the sequential tasks to complete that will be the flow okay so i also want to explain one last topic in this video that is what is promise chaining okay how to resolve promise chaining probably i'll take in the next video but you want i want you to answer what is promise chaining okay we have one promise here then let me let us have this as a two seconds of delay or one second delay and i'm just naming this as promise one okay promise one let's say there is another promise okay which is called promise two it has around two second delay okay um let me rename this as promise this is promise one and this is promise two i'm removing all the locks um uh, not required for this video so this is not a question actually this is just a concept that i'm trying to explain in this video okay which is a promise chaining um so let's say you have a you have a requirement where you first you want to get the user data after you have the user not uh, skip this example i'm taking uh, speaking generally so unless you have a user data you cannot make a call to get uh, whatever the user's preferences are okay like you want to know what is the what is the let's say e-commerce site first you need to have a user data after you have a user data you can you can look for his recommendations what he is most likely to uh, interested in so that let us show that on the top so it's like only if a first api call is successful we can make the second api call correct this is called the promise chaining one promise is resolved then we are going to uh, call the next promise okay so this is a promise one and promise two so i'm just trying to mock that here so here we have a console dot data then i'm going to put promise two okay or to be precise i'm just copy this and i'll put here promise two dot then so to be just be separating it this is a promise one correct promise one promise two okay data two data two one just to avoid confusion i'm renaming the variables you can just still have the data because it's a functional scope scope variable okay and catch error 
from is to error here so from is one error okay so now why it is called chaining is because there is a one promise inside another promise first let us execute then let us see the other answers so promise one promise one promise two promise two okay so whatever basically returned here so promise inside so this console dot log promise one and data one is also promise one whatever returned here promise two and data two whatever is returned here so promise two promise two so why i i, I thought of showing you this is so this is just the two level of api calls correct so there could be a possibility where you have a multiple hierarchy so after you get this one user first you got the user information then you got the user recommendations so in user recommendations could be general like uh, what you would like in electronics and what you would like in uh, uh, food etc but in electronics let's say he likes uh, some samsung phone in samsung phone there are hundreds of category correct uh, like maybe basic phone feature phone or any advanced tablets etc so now which category is interested let's say you have to make another call here promise two dot then so inside this you'll have a promise three so where you'll have a promise three um inside this and you want to make a call inside this after promise two dot is successful then you will make a promise three okay so where you make it data data three okay so here you make it promise three and promise three so now this is the third level of the promise so promise is kind of getting chained one inside another okay there if you have worked on e-commerce or something highly scalable applications maybe um, e-commerce ott streaming you might have definitely encountered some scenarios like this where you have to call x, x api only after the voice output has come like there are multiple api calls you have to make there but you cannot make them in a parallel way you have to make them in a sequential way so you end up having this promise chaining one inside the another see by now the way we started the example and if you look at it now code has already become clumsy it is difficult to read this code correct because with a multiple hierarchies and if you have to debug also it will become very difficult to put up breakpoints and check so to avoid this problem there are multiple ways okay that is the first topic that we'll be discussing in next video okay so thank you so much for watching uh, if you like this video please do like it on my youtube channel and do not share the do not forget to share this video with your friends and please this is my humble request to subscribe to my youtube channel and i'll try to add my medium links uh, where i've written a lot of articles about javascript and react uh, and angular concepts i'll also link my github url where a um, lot of questions that are asked in this video uh, in this video there's only only one question but there are multiple questions that are asked across multiple uh, video series of mine so all of them are documented there you can pick those questions and practice them okay so thank you so much for watching catch you in next video